Hello, in this video we will discuss about the non-shivering and shivering thermogenesis and we will discuss on the aspect of the physiology. So first of all we will understand about the non-shivering uh, thermogenesis and what is that. And during the basically the cold weather we will feel the shivering. Why? Because the production of heat by the muscle contraction and relaxation continuously. But in this way here is the uh, nervous system. Whenever the uh, cold weather will be occur, the 15 degree Celsius temperature will uh, intact with the skin. And after the skin will be receptor, this receptor is the cold receptor will detect and to move the uh, high, uh, move the thalamus to the uh, spinal cord to the brain. And after the integration to uh, motor nerves will trigger to shivering. And this is the involuntary response. And in this way you can see here is the 38 to 36 degree Celsius temperature increase fluctuation with the range of the 37 degree Celsius. So in this way here is the shivering will be occur when the temperature will be low. So in this way the shivering thermogenesis will trigger the heat production. So for normal maintenance of the heat from 36 to 37 degree Celsius in our body. So this was the therm uh, shivering thermogenesis while the non-shivering thermogenesis is the different mechanism in which the ATP is not produced while the heat produced rather than the production of heat uh, uh, production of ATP. <coughs> so here you can see this is the brain along with the spinal cord. So first of all we will discuss the we will look at the motor nerves which that is involuntary control and trigger the shivering thermogenesis due to the acetylcholine produced from the neuromuscular junction. So in this way here is the cerebrum which that is the higher brain cortex for detection of the hot and cold weather. We will transmit the signal to the thalamus and hypothalamus to the pituitary gland but in this case the shivering thermogenesis which that is not transmit the signal to the pituitary gland while toward the motor nerves and this triggers the shivering thermogenesis through a synapse and in this way it is known as the neuromuscular junction which produce the acetylcholine neurotransmitter. While in the case of non-shivering thermogenesis here is the hypothalamus will be triggered from the higher brain cortex to the thalamus to hypothalamus to pituitary gland which they had released the hormone. So this is the hormonal mechanism we will discuss. So here is the hypothalamus which does contain neuroscritory cells and this during the cold weather 15 degree Celsius temperature which trigger the hypothalamus by this mechanism after the detection uh, from the cold receptor or uh, some. So the uh, hypothalamus will produce the thyrotropic releasing factor which that stimulate the adenohypophysis to produce anterior pituitary gland to produce the Thermo, uh, thyroid stimulating hormone and adenocorticotropic releasing hormone. These two hormones will trigger the heat, will produce the heat without the shivering in our body because the shivering continuously will not a good thing because our vibration and the body maintenance will be not. So production of the thyroid stimulating hormone and adenocorticotropic hormone. And in this way the thyroid gland contain a medulla and the cortex which contain a receptor that's medullary cell and cortical cell which that is the adrenal gland will bind with the thyroid uh, adrenocorticotropic releasing hormone. So adre adrenal gland will be stimulated to produce the sympath uh, to trigger the sympathetic nervous system activation by the neurotransmitter is a cortisol hormone and epinephrine and norepinephrine production. Two types of hormone, epinephrine and norepinephrine, used for the vasoconstriction and vasodilation and also bind with the hormone sensitive lipase triggering by the uh, adipocyte. So on the other hand, the cortisol hormone will lead to sympathetic nervous system for the fight and flight response. While here is the hormone sensitive lipase will be produced after the binding with the epinephrine on the epinephrine receptor of the adipocyte.
while the lipolysis is occur due to the hormone sensitive lipase to trigger the fat free fatty acid into the blood so in this way in this way the beta oxidation will be occur and the glu glycogenolysis will be occur due to the cortisol hormone production and on the other hand the glucagon will also produce but we will not understand about that just we will focus on the uh, atp production uh, atp inhibition and heat production so in this way here is you can see this is the gly glu glycogenolysis will be occur and the beta oxidation in the liver as well as the muscle and the muscle will basically use for the glycogenolysis to produce the glucose and the blood glucose level will be high so let's begin to understand the thyroid gland so the thyroid gland is contain a thyroid receptor basically is the thyroid stimulating hormone receptor this thyroid uh, stimulating hormone receptor will bind with the thyroid gland to produce the t3 and t4 triiodothyronine and thyroxine this triiodothyronine and thyroxine which that is ultimately convert into the triiodothyronine after the releasing of one iodine molecule so uh, one iodine alum atom so here is the also norepinephrine will be produced and the thyroid stimulating hormone will move inside and when move into the cell for example muscle cell or some tissue etc etc so when go into the uh, cells inside so inside is contain nucleus so, so nucleus contain a chromosome which that is in the form of condensed formation of the dna so here is the channel when go into the t3 and t4 which that is enter into the cell so after the five d d iod nase enzyme used to convert the t4 to t3 and the t3 is important and we go into the dna and bind inside that is the signal molecule and the coactivator will be bind within it and in this way the t3 will bind with the t uh, tr basically t3 receptor so after this binding here is, you can see the rxr basically thyroid hormone response uh, response element this is you can see and to transcription begin after the suppressor will be released and the suppressor will be released to promote the transcription to produce messenger rna this will be go out into the cytoplasm and after go into the cytoplasm the messenger rna will be translate into the protein that protein is the um, uh, reliable for the uh, production of feed so it means it is the ucp so the ucp is a protein So the UCP is the protein which that is entered into the mitochondria and also another important thing is that norepinephrine will be bound with the G couple protein receptor with the uh, with the separation of the alpha subunit of the inside protein from the trimeric protein to release the alpha by the A by the GDP we convert into the GTPs by the activation to adenylate cyclase which that is convert the cyclic amp and this cyclic amp will trigger the phospho uh, protein kinase a which that is trigger the hormone sensitive lipase and in this way the mitochondria is absorb the ucp while the hormone sensitive lipase will be trigger more and this hormone sensitive lipase will be bind with the adipocyte to produce the free fatty acid from the triglyceride so here the UCP is uh, triggered by the um, uh, thyroid gland. So remember about that. So here is this is the lipolysis of fat will be occur to produce the triacylglycerol convert into the free fatty acid. And this free fatty acid will enter into the blood circulatory system. And the increase of the fatty acid will lead to beta oxidation in the liver. And in this way the fatty acid basically the beta oxidation is also occur in the in the uh, muscle so remember about because mitochondria is required for it so anyhow here i am drawing the bigger picture of the mitochondria for uh, the understanding of the ucp mode of action 
so here is the inner mitochondrial matrix and outer mitochondrial matrix so the outer mitochondrial membrane and inner mitochondrial membrane so the inner mitochondrial membrane the acetyl coa will be produced from the beta fatty acid oxidation the beta oxidation or the glucose oxidation from the glycolysis to move the pyruvate inside to produce the acetyl coa so this go into the krebs cycle to produce nadh and fadh2 and in this way the atp synthetase enzyme used for the after the proton pump out to move back into the inner mitochondrial matrix to produce the atp via a atp synthetase enzyme while in this case the heat production is the separate mechanism in this way the ucp will be bind with the inner mitochondrial membrane after the bind in the proton will be move inside due to the proton concentration is outer is more so in this way the inside when move the ucp will be produce heat and this is the major mechanism for the production of heat so the energy proton motive force is dissipates as heat and rather than atp production from uh, atp production from atp synthetase so the atp synthetase will be inhibit and the parasympathetic nervous system will be inhibit and sympathetic nervous system will be activate to produce more heat and it is not a complete thing but the atp is also produced for the production of heat uh, by the detachment of the phosphate group so thanks for watching